What's going on everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. TGIF baby. TGIF. Alright, we got some good stuff to talk about in today's video. I was recently asked by a subscriber, hey man, what do you prefer, two post lift or four post lift? Can you have one without the other? What's your take on it? If you had your own shop, would you get one or the other or both? We're going to talk about that here today. But first, let's go to the video of the day and share some quick tips for automotive and then we'll get back to the discussion. Stick around. All right, which is more accurate? We're in a Dodge Durango. I've got a dial gauge to check temperature. We're sitting in around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, here's a digital thermometer. You can see 88.9. And then we're using the temperature probe on the Snap-on DVOM. Now this is without the car being started. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna just see the different types of accuracy from all three of these, and then we're gonna talk about it here a little bit later. So I'm gonna turn the front on. Wanna make sure that we're pushed all the way over to cold, that the snowflake is on, and that we're at max vented AC. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to number three. I'm gonna take it around the block, and we will see where the temperatures are at. All right, so I've got to a stopping point. Let's take a look at what we got going on. We got 51 and a half to 50 degrees coming from the Snap-on DVOM. We're sitting at around 59 to 60 degrees on the uh, analog style. And we're sitting at about 59, 60 degrees on the digital style. All right, so let's talk about something here for a quick second. You'll notice that on this digital style, how it kind of goes up and then comes down and you can see those changes uh, as the compressor is cycling on and off as it's going on and may uh, reduce the amount of degrees that you actually have as it cycles off then it's not gonna be pushing it so hard so temperatures might rise a little bit but you can see that on a digital thermometer at least that's my understanding whereas the analog one pretty much stays stagnant. Now why is there about a five to 10 degree difference with the DVOM compared to the other ones? Well, maybe that's because I have these in their sleeves, maybe not. So now I'm gonna drive back to the shop with them unsleeved and see if there's any difference. All right, so you can see our digital gauge is now showing about 55, 56 degrees. Our analog is still at about 59 to 60. And our snap-on is sitting at around about 51 to 55 degrees, somewhere in there. You can see as I'm uh, depressing the throttle, how the temperature starts to drop. So that AC compressor clutch is moving faster now. So which one's more accurate? Well, to be honest, the analog is a quick down and dirty. It's not going to show you any cycling of the AC compressor. Uh, and usually, uh, it's not going to show you the coldest point. The digital, a lot better as far as an option when it comes to these thermometers. Uh, gives you a lot better reading than the analog one, but not quite as good as the DVOM because now you got that probe really in that vent, getting all that air that's coming through. Uh, right now. So also one more thing Sleeve versus not sleeve didn't see a huge difference between sleeving and unsleeving the thermometers So I wouldn't worry about that too much the uh, temperature probe on the DVOM though a lot more sensitive to uh, Not just ambient temperature, but also to cooling temperature So your DVOM is a great way to go if you have the temperature probe Okay, so why did we have a difference in temperature when we were pushing on the accelerator pedal? A couple of reasons. I think the main reason is that while you're driving, you have airflow coming through the condenser, through the radiator, which is actually changing the temperature to blow cooler. Uh, this is my opinion, okay? Uh, I haven't been in the ASC books in a while. Maybe there's something to that. But I remember when we were in college and we were testing the AC system, oftentimes for AC performance testing, they would have us put a big fan in front of the radiator and condenser 
to see if that changed the cooling efficiency of the AC system. So that's number one. Two, the other second reason why I was thinking why it would change and come down in temperature is because you have more demand from the AC compressor or AC compressor clutch. If it's a clutchless system, then maybe you don't have to worry about the clutch so much. If it has a clutch, it has more demand on it. So as that belt's turning, it's picking the RPM up of that AC compressor or that worm drive gear, depending on what type of system, and causing it to work harder, which then helps it to blow cooler. Instead of sitting on an idle where you're not moving, there's no airflow, uh, the belt's just spinning at an idle, there's not a lot of demand from it, so it's not gonna blow as cool, um, but this is one way to check. Something else I wanna add before we go into today's topic is I was asked, you know, what is the most efficient temperature that you should expect from a good running AC system? Uh, if you're running at about 30 degrees or better as far as its cooling ability, I think you're doing okay and you shouldn't worry about it too, too much. Um, could it be cooler? Yeah, but to what degree? Who knows? Year, make, model, debris, trap between condenser and radiator, etc. Lots of things that take place. Uh, oftentimes, more times than not, I'm finding a lot of napkins behind the glove box sucked up against the blower motor, which ruin... Uh, the efficiency of you actually getting cold air. Other times it's like a cabin air filter that's completely clogged with debris, uh, a mode door or something like that. It's very few and far between. Most times it come, when a vehicle comes in and they're low on Freon, usually that means there's an issue. So using a UV light and a flashlight, uh, I'm sorry, a UV light and a pair of yellow glasses to find out where it might be leaking from is a good starting point. And then if you can't see it, you don't see any dye, right away, which is what I learned the hard way on this uh, Chevy pickup truck. Uh, you use a sniffer and you can sniff around the evaporator core and that's gonna pick up both your small and slightly large leaks. So, food for thought. Getting back to today's topic, so two post, four post, what is the difference? Which would you rather have? So, there's always a situation where you want one over the other depending on what it is that you're doing to the vehicle. Obviously, if you own, operate, or run some kind of an alignment shop, you're gonna want to have a four post because that way you can do the alignment. You can roll it back, you can do your caster swing, etc. If you're doing really big trucks that have a lot of uh, gross weight to them that outweigh the two posts that you have, you'd want a four post so you could pick the vehicle up without worrying about it uh, being a, or exceeding the maximum allowable tolerance of that lift, four posts tend to hold more weight than a two post. So in this situation, you could do a transmission, you can uh, you know, pull an engine if absolutely necessary, it would be a little bit difficult depending on the four post that you have. But a transmission swap, stuff like that, easy peasy, even if you're doing brake jobs on heavy duty pickup trucks or trucks with a lumber rack that would get in the way of a two post, Lots of reasons why you would want a four post, but the main reason would be like an alignment. So why would you want a two post? Well, now, if you have to take the wheels, tires off, drop the subframe, things like that, a two post lift is gonna definitely come in handy. Now they make these above ground as well as in ground, and they work out really well for things that require you to take off the subframe, tires, drop rear ends, to change out the entire housing, or maybe to rebuild them. Transfer cases, transmissions, engines, I mean, you name it. I've used a two-post lift probably more times than I have a four-post lift in my entire career. But both have their time and place for sure. So if I had my own shop, what would I probably start with? To be honest, if I only had enough room for one, maybe two bays, and I know this is getting ridiculous, but there is such a thing as a one-bay shop. A one-man, one-bay shop. It's not too far-fetched. If I had my option, it would be a two post lift. I don't care if it's in ground or above ground, two post lift all day long. I would just reduce the amount of heavy line traffic that I would do on bigger vehicles that weighed a lot. Now, if it came down to me doing a little bit more like alignments and more steering and suspension stuff or it would require me to have an alignment machine or I'm doing a lot of heavy duty work on big heavy trucks all the time, then yes, absolutely a, two po uh, a four post lift. But I think even if I had a, let's say a two or three bay shop, and all I had was a two post, a four post, and then a completely empty bay, 
I could be fully functional on that because I have all three options available. Because there are some times that you can diagnose and repair certain things without even having to use any kind of rack at all. You don't need to take up a rack to do a lot of the more simplistic and small repairs. In fact, some of them, most of them, you can do on the fly outside without ever having to pull it into a bay. At the dealership, we were required to like juggle cars in and out and stack cars behind each other in different crisscross patterns. It was a nightmare. People had a hard time, technicians had a hard time getting cars in and out fast because everyone was, it was, a, it was congested traffic in downtown LA. It was terrible. I absolutely hated that. But at any rate, those are the lifts that I would have in a shop. There are some shops that I've seen in town that are just a one bay, one lift shop that are one person operated and they seem to do pretty okay. And I think later in life, if, if for whatever reason, uh, my boss decided to retire and close a shop up and I decided to go acapella, I would just have a one bay, one man shop for a little while until I decided to open up some kind of hobby shop, which is like what my overall goal would be later down the road. That's all I got for this video. You guys tell me down in the comments, what do you prefer? Two post lift, four post lift, and then if you have any more thoughts about our little tiny tech tip for the day as far as what you feel is better, analog, digital, or DVOM, please put them down in the comments. Let us know what it is that you use to check AC performance testing, what temperatures you feel like are sufficient as far as sufficient cooling, and what other issues you might have ran into along the way that could hinder that performance result. Let us know down in the comments. Again, cheers to those of you who have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your Friday. We'll see you next time. Deuces.